Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. It's turned really cold here today and um, my hands are absolutely freezing. So I'm not sure if I'm even going to be able to paint yet. Um, so it's obviously turned my mind to autumn come winter. And um, I know we've done lots of leaves and stuff like that um, in the past, but uh, I think that's what I'm going to paint today. And in front of me, I've got a selection of rather dried out, um, but still very beautiful uh, acorns and oak leaves from our trees here. These are beautiful fat acorns, which are going to be wonderful for the little animals here, the mice and so on who eat them. We often find these acorns with little neat little holes in them, empty. Uh, and sometimes you find little stashes of acorns in holes in fences and things like that. So we know the mice will be very busy collecting them. We don't have squirrels here. I think they do have them in France. I think they have red squirrels here, but we don't have them in Brittany where we live. Anyway, so I thought that would be quite nice um, to draw. I also wanted to show you these leaves, which have dried out now. And I'm hoping that uh, as I show you these, Tamsin will put a photo up that I took of them when we just collected them off the tree. This is a rhododendron and um, they are amazing colours. And when they were fresh, they were bright, but now they're still, as I say, really beautiful and absolutely begging to be painted. Gorgeous, aren't they, the colours? And um, so I've got them stored in my little crocheted basket here that I made, thanks to um, Jada in Stitches and her wonderful channel for crochet. I learned a lot of things from her the other year. Um, so yes, they're inspirational. Pop those over there. So these are what I'm going to work on. What I've been practising on this morning is doing some different shapes and types of leaves and uh, I'm, th I'm thinking of, of, of making them more interesting and doing this oak shape. So that's the natural material I'm going to use for this little painting. And now I want to tell you some exciting news, which is that we have launched a new little channel called From the Garden. We've put a link and uh, some information about it in the description below this video. On From the Garden, you'll find videos showing you the plants and sometimes animals and birds that I'm using to inspire my paintings, all filmed in our own garden here in France. And so when you need a bit of inspiration or something like that, you can take a quick look at what we've got over there. If you don't know what an oak leaf looks like or you don't have a handy oak tree, you can definitely borrow mine. So when you've finished watching this video here, why don't you hop on to From the Garden and have a good look round over there. And uh, now let's paint. Now I've got, I, I want to make a card, autumn card. Um, and I've got, um, Etcher sent me this amazingly, really nice um, set of premium watercolour gift cards, which um, have got a pre-scored fold in the middle, so they're nice and easy to bend into shape. And so I thought we'd have a go on one of them. And they've also got envelopes. I mean, this is so fancy, it's unbelievable. These envelopes, nice little bit of ASMR or whatever it's called, rustling. This, look, look how thick that is. That is so heavy. And this is really also very, very nice. <laughs> the two of these together weigh more than 20 grams, which is about an ounce, and uh, takes it into the second band of um, post now here. So Etcher have gone a bit bazonkers with this envelope, which weighs more than the card. <laughs> so anyway, never mind. Thank you very much, Etcher, for that. And uh, we will work on one of those. So I'll bend it back to flat again. 
So what you could do, if you wanted, you could, um, if you have access to something like this, some little leaves of an oaky variety, you could lay them on your card to give yourself an idea of whether or not it was going to make a good composition, couldn't you? And then what you could do then is get yourself a pencil, which I have various assorted varieties here. Gosh, it is cold and I've got the heating on, but it doesn't seem to be doing much. Um, yeah, so we've got that oaky thing, and this is cool. So we're going to draw something, I guess, to try to um, give ourselves a design. So I think that could work. And it's got a sort of um, um, scrunchy, make sure you can see, a, a kind of um, very rough stem. I've no idea. This is not at all what I intended to do. But anyway, I'm just kind of scribbling in there. And then I'm going to outline some crazy oak leaves like these ones and we will indeed put a acorn, an acorn here. These are surprisingly big, these ones, and then we want another. This is a good thing to do when your hands are cold and they're sort of saying, oh, don't make me do anything. Don't make me do anything that requires any kind of skill because I'm freezing. I suppose I should have put the heating on sooner. And we'll put another, we put another acorn down here. They have a, a stem, quite a long stalk, so you can place them wherever you want. You don't have to draw it if you don't want to. You can just paint straight on. It's not obligatory to draw. And uh, you can, uh, I'm going to put another leaf, a little one, squinchily one, uh, down here. Um, I'll do a sketch of this for you so you can download it from the um, website, dianeanton.com. Oh. oh, God, that wasn't a good idea, was it? Um... Anyone else suffer from cold hands? I think I'm going to have to get some of those um, little, um, what do you call them? Um, little things that heat up by themselves and you can put them in your pocket so that when you put your hands in the pocket, um, they get warmed up. I'm just looking for an eraser here. I don't know what I've done with it. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Okay, so I'm going to um, use, I've got here a set of paints. These are um, a mixture of Schmincke, um, Winsor & Newton, and possibly, no, I think Schmincke and Winsor & Newton is what I've got here. So they're good quality paints. And this is my swatch out card for it. So I know these are going to be all autumn types of colors. And I'm going to use, I might use this black pencil, possibly. Um, done with that, I'm trying to find my brush. I've got a size uh, seven round draw well maestro brush here. Any round brush with a good point would do. So looking at my example here, I'm going to base this on gray and I'm hoping it's going to work. So I'm going to just draw in with the brush, the stem, just dancing your very obliging brush over the paper. We'll find out what kind of quality this paper is. And then we need to warm that up a little bit, like my hands. Um, 
So I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, quinacridone gold, I think, and just drop that into the wet paint for the stem there. And um, let's draw in the acorn cap to make that nice and wet with quinacridone gold. And then we want burnt sienna for the actual acorn itself. And don't worry if it runs because this is only the first coat. So just put that in. And then um, we're going to put quinacridone gold quite lightly in the leaves and try to keep it irregular. You don't want it. Don't worry about getting rid of any little pools of water because then you're going to drop a little bit of green in and just let that run. Going to do the same in the caps as well because they're still quite greenish, but they will have a second coat. So don't worry about any inaccuracies there. Just let that run. And then again, you put some quinacridone up here. And you want the variety, so just leave it really loose. And then I, I'm using a little bit of green here from my um, Kiritake set, but any green will do. This is a kind of sap green that I'm using there. So just drop some of that in. And then maybe I'll start the next one with green, which is already on my brush. Waste not, want not. Start that one with green. And then I'll drop the um, quinacridone gold into that. And let that just find its place. And then this one up here, we'll do it the other way around. Put the quinacridone gold in first. Use plenty of water. A little bit of green, maybe a bit of burnt sienna on this one. Let that play around with life. Um, maybe we'll start this one with burnt sienna. And then, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, what should I put next? How about some orange? That might be a bit strong. Well, it might not be. Let's put that, anyway, put that there. And then perhaps a little bit of green. Oak. So that's that. And then um, you can do various different things. We could come in with some ink and uh, a pen and give that a bit of a, uh, what do you call it? A bit of form, if I can find a fine one. I don't want anything terribly thick. What's this? That's point two. That will probably do. And then, like I said, the this is all sort of scrunchy. It's got lots of texture on it. So we can turn this into a pen and ink really easily. I just hold your pen sort of vertically so you can get plenty of jumpy movements because it's not the most accurate way of holding a pen, but it is perhaps the freest. And put a line there for that. And then come around here and then they have always dots at the top. We're going to put some more brown over the top of that in a minute. They're going to be outside of the scrunched up shape. These half dried leaves, half dried in the sense of they are becoming dried leaves. And we can put in some veins as well using the pen. I was watching a 
um, Skillshare video yesterday um, from um, about um, flower arranging. And it was funny because I, I've done a Skillshare video on it. So you can see that that's coming out on Thursday. Um, but the chap, Spencer Fall, his name is, he's from New Zealand, but he, I think he works in California now. He was saying all the same things that I say about art, that if you feel it's going wrong, you know, when he's doing his flower arrangements, he says, sometimes I think, oh gosh, I, I've done it all. I've got to, you know, start again, but don't just keep going because it will always turn out, you know, eventually. And I think that's right with paintings. You can very, very quickly, you can be, you get to a point where you think, oh, I think I've made a terrible mistake. I shouldn't have done it like this, but don't, don't stop. You know, okay, stop and have a cup of tea by all means, but don't give it up because it might turn out to be your favorite thing you ever did unlike this pen, which was decided to stop working. But don't give up. Persuade it to keep working. And if it won't give you any ink, it can at least give you nice lines. Now, I know I'm going to put you aside, pen, which you are being naughty. And I've got a point three there, so I might switch to that one. But before I do that, I'm going to um, pick up some, some beige, brown, something the lids of these caps. Always makes me think of little people, doesn't it, you? And uh, I probably need a little bit of black in there. And these are much, much better, stronger. We want to keep them a little bit delicate, so not too dark. So I like that, something like that. And um, probably time to let that dry. But what I do want to do is put a border around it. I'm going to put a... It's not quite time yet for gold borders, is it? I was thinking about gold. And then I think, well, no, because we save that for Christmas. So perhaps we'll just find the 0.5 pen, which I hope is going to work. And we need a ruler. And the trick of using the ruler upside down is a good one when it comes to this. So it doesn't run, doesn't, what's the word? Um, smudge. concentration required here to try and get these lines straight as possible. Oops. <laughs> okay, come on. Let us get that right. Oh yeah, that'll do. Now, we'll just let that dry. And then when it's dry, we'll rub out some of the pencil lines and see whether we need to do anything else on that. Um, but yeah, so back in a minute. Okay, so we're dry now. So I'm just going to um, finish this off with a few little bits and pieces. I've got my 0.5 um, 
micron here and um, I'm going to use a white gel pen to just highlight some of the bumps on the cap of the acorn. So they're just little circular, semicircular kind of scribbly bits and pieces. And then we'll just do a few highlighty horizontal, no, parallel is the word I'm looking for, parallel lines. Going down like that. Those ones are a little bit dark, so I'm just going to wash them out a little bit. I didn't mean dark, I meant a little bit light. What's the matter with my vocabulary today? And then um, I'm going to get something that I meant to pick up. Where did I put it? A brown pen. I suppose you could call this multi... Mixed media, not multimedia, that's something else, isn't it? So I've got a, uh, this is a Stettler, Stettler Stabilo um, brown felt tip pen. And I'm going to use that because it's quite worn out. So it only gives very sort of scritchy occasional lines, which is just exactly what I want. And we're going to just basically texturize what we've done a little bit. A little bit of, just texture, following the lines. And then around the outside edges, where it's all, like you can see, it's all sort of damaged and lovely. So we want to just do a bit more of that. And some of the lines where you've gone, you want to go over them a bit more, make them a bit darker. I really like this orangey one there. I think that's really good. Sort of. And then, um, I want something in the background, really. There's various things we could do in the background. We could have one thing that we could have that might work nicely. It's a little bit of very pale greyish, sort of a little bit of, no, maybe not so much grey, perhaps a little bit brown, light brown, perhaps sort of maybe A little bit of, um, once you get started, you kind of get into it. A little bit of, um, this is Naples yellow. Just a little bit of that. Just to give it connection to the paper. When that's dry, you'll hardly see it, but it will make a difference. And then we could, we could, have some, I don't know, just some little bits and pieces. It's always hard to start putting things in the background because you think, oh, it's nice and clean, it's nice and tidy, I don't want to mess that up. But actually, 99 times out of 100, it works. And then you think to yourself, oh, I know, I'll put a few dots some of the leaves and this is this is how painting evolves I keep getting that there's a song that we used to sing when we were involved with um, Waldorf schools um, there was a group called Green Jack and they had a song about hunting for a song a song about a song trying to find a song so you went off hunting for a song and one of the lines in that song about hunting for a song was no idea what direction to take. And that's the way it is with painting. You don't necessarily, you just have a rough idea. And then you trust your own intuition. And I know we've got lots of ladies who watch 
me who know now that if you just trust yourself and let yourself act and have no firm idea which direction to take over hillside or into the wood, you just work on it until, until such time as you are happy and often surprised by what you can achieve, which is always a nice pleasure when you say, oh, did I do that? So, I think I'm going to call that done. Put my initial in the corner and say hello to autumn. One little card to give to your best friend for autumn. And you say, I hope you like it. I did it specially for you. So I hope you liked it. And if you did, give me a like and subscribe, turn on notifications. Join our membership, join our club, become a member of Patreon or of YouTube membership. That would be wonderful. And I'll see you again here on the next time when we're going to be doing a nice bouquet of flowers. So bye for now, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>